Welcome to the 15th Sunday after Trinity. Uh, our focus today is going to be on priorities and keeping those correct. Uh, to always keep the gifts of God before us as we go. And so keep that in mind as we go through our service today. Our hymn of invocation today is number 685. Let us ever walk with Jesus. Number 685. Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. 
O Almighty God, Merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Dear brothers and sisters, if this is your penitent confession, then hear the good news that Christ's blood has won for you. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our introit for today is drawn upon portions of Psalm 86. Incline your ear, O Lord, and answer me. Save your servant who trusts in you. You are my God. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for to you do I cry all the day. Gladden the soul of your servant, for to you, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer. Listen to my plea for grace. But you, O Lord, are a God merciful and gracious. Turn to me and be gracious to me. Give your strength to your servant, and save the son of your maidservant. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Incline your ear, O Lord, and answer me. Save your servant who trusts in you. You are my God. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for to you do I cry all the day. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. We praise Thee, we bless Thee, we worship Thee. We glorify Thee, we give thanks to Thee for Thy great glory. O Lord God, Heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us, for Thou only art holy, Thou only art the Lord, Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. 
the Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Let us pray. O Lord, we implore you, let your continual pity cleanse and defend your church. And because she cannot continue in safety without your aid, preserve her evermore by your help and goodness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our Old Testament reading for today is from 1 Kings, the 17th chapter. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah, Arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow there to feed you. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, a widow was there gathering sticks. And he called to her and said, Bring me a little water in a vessel, that I may drink. And as she was going to bring it, he called to her and said, Bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. And she said, As the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked, only a handful of flour in a jar, and a little oil in a jug. And now I am gathering a couple of sticks, that I may go in and prepare it for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said to her, Do not fear. Go and do as you have said, but first make me a little cake of it and bring it to me, and afterwards make something for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, The jar of flour shall not be spent, and the jug of oil shall not be empty, until the day that the Lord sends rain upon the earth. And she went and did as Elijah said, and she and he and her household ate for many days. The jar of flour was not spent. Neither did the jug of oil become empty, according to the word of the Lord that he spoke by Elijah. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm for today is uh, Psalm 146. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. Put not your trust in princes, in a son of man, in whom there is no salvation. When his breath departs, he returns to the earth. On that very day his plans perish. Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob whose hope is in the Lord is God, who made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the sojourners. He upholds the widow and the fatherless. But the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. The Lord will reign forever. Your God, O Zion, to all generations praise the Lord. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Our epistle for today is from the book of Galatians, the fifth chapter. If we live by the Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. Brothers, if anyone is caught in any transgression, you who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. Keep watch on yourself, 
lest you too be tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks he is something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. But let each one test his own work, and then his reason to boast will be in himself alone, and not in his neighbor. For each will have to bear his own load. One who is taught the word must share all good things with the one who teaches. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked, for whatever one sows, that will he also reap. For the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption. But the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. And let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. So then, as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone, and especially to those who are of the household of faith. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our verse of the day for today is from Psalm 95, verse 1. Alleluia! O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Alleluia! The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the sixth chapter. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Jesus said, No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. Therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. We continue by confessing our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our hymn of the day today is number 732, All Depends on Our Possessing. Number 732.
God's abundant grace and blessing through all earthly wealth depart. They who trust with faith unshaken by their God are not forsaken and will keep a dauntless heart. He who to this day has fed me and to many joys has led me is and forever will be mine. He who ever gently schools me, he who daily guides and rules me, will remain my help divine. Many spend their lives in fretting over trifles and in getting things that have no solid ground. I shall strive to win a treasure that will bring me lasting pleasure and that now is seldom found. When with sorrow I am stricken, hope anew my heart will quicken, all my longing shall be stilled. To his loving kindness tender, soul and body I surrender. For on God alone I build. Well, he knows what best to grant me, All the longing hopes that haunt me, Joy and sorrow have their day. I shall doubt his wisdom never, As God will so be it ever. I commit to him my way. If my days on earth he lengthen, God my weary soul will strengthen. All my trust in him my place. Earthly wealth is not abiding, Like a stream away is gliding. Safe I anchor in his grace. The grace, mercy, and peace of Christ Jesus rest upon each and every one of you this day. The theory of faith is really rather easy to understand. The classroom portion of the Christian faith, if I can use that, Faith is summed up in the simple meaning to the first commandment, right? You shall have no other gods. What does this mean? You should fear, love, and trust in God above all things. That's it. Faith, in a nutshell. Trust in God above all things. Yeah, but you and I both know that this is much easier in theory than it is in real life. Putting the theory of faith into actual practice is a whole other ballgame. So from our gospel, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Did you catch that? I hope so. It wasn't like it was encrypted or anything. It's very blunt, in fact, and to the point. Put first things first. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Oh, unfortunately, if we're honest, we must admit that this is something that's far easier said than done. The theory is far easier than actually having to put it into practice, isn't it? You know what, though? It doesn't have to be. This is one of those things that is so easy that can not only a child understand it, but a faithful child can also quite easily put it into practice. It's those of us who've been tainted and jaded by the fallen world we live in who hear these words of Jesus and say, Yeah, yeah, but you don't understand. This is how the real world works. I do seek the kingdom of God. I look forward to that heavenly kingdom, but that's not the reality right now. Right now, I'm living in this world. 
Right now I have bills to pay and mouths to feed. The kingdom of God will come someday, and I'm seeking my way home to it every day, but right now I have real world things to worry about. Folks, I don't mean to hurt anyone's feelings here, but seeking the kingdom of God is not like getting on some theological yellow brick road and trekking your way to the magical land of Oz that we call heaven. You know what I mean. Three steps forward, two steps back. Maybe you fall down once in a while, but you keep going on and eventually you get there. That's not what it means to seek the kingdom of God. You see, the original Greek word that Jesus uses here for kingdom does not refer to a static, fixed place, a, a postal code, or a, a place that you can see somewhere over there. It's not used here as a noun. That word, basileian, is best understood here as a verb. What Jesus is saying here is to seek first the reign and the rule of God. So let me ask you, does the reign and rule of God take place in our daily lives right here and right now? Absolutely. In fact, as St. Paul speaks of it in the very first chapter of Romans, from chapter 1, verses 19 and 20, the reign and rule of God is evidenced everywhere for all of us to see. Through the eyes and ears of the gift of saving faith, we're able to recognize the almighty and all-loving reign of God in the simplest of things. Things such as word and sacrament and absolution. And the same thing goes here for that term righteousness from the gospel. Remember, we are not only to seek first God's reign and rule, but we are to seek first his righteousness. That word in the Greek, uh, diakosene, is also translated numerous times as justification. You remember what that word means, right? To be justified by God means to be declared holy and forgiven, innocent. Do you remember how we're justified? As St. Paul says, not by our works, lest anyone should boast. We are justified by faith alone, in grace alone, God's grace alone, which he grants to us because of the all-redeeming death and resurrection of Jesus Christ alone. So think about what Christ is saying here to his disciples. Remember the context of this conversation. This is still part of the Sermon on the Mount. This is Christ talking to faithful people who are truly struggling in their daily existence, far worse than we disciples struggle today. The world has always been a scary place, especially for those who walk by faith. Think about what Christ is saying to you this very day. Put first the first and most important things first. Yes, this fallen and sinful world is tough. So tough, in fact, that it at times seems like we honestly don't know how we're going to make everything to come together and work out. But if God takes care of birds and plants so wondrously, will he not provide you with everything you need? You, the only work of his entire creation that he actually breathed life into? And that brings up a good question, a question that you should constantly ask yourself. What do I really need? Believe it or not, but you don't need food, clothing, money, or any other worldly thing. At least not when it comes to getting what really matters most. Eternal life and forgiveness and everlasting salvation. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, you come into this world with nothing. And you're going to leave it with nothing. Nothing except that which you absolutely need. Saving faith alone in Christ alone, which is yours by God's free grace alone. In this way, I'll close out today's message, not by commanding you to simply drop the reins in your life and stop worrying about everything, which would be a command to poor and unfaithful stewardship. And that's not what Jesus was teaching here, but by pointing you and reorienting you to the first and foremost things, the things that matter most and need to come first and foremost in the order of daily life. The almighty and all-gracious reign and rule of God in his absolutely free, unmerited, and all-redeeming gift of justification. Understand, too, that this command of Christ to put the first things first isn't just for when things go bad in life. This is to be our first things first reality all of the time. So, folks... When you understand and believe this, the practice of faith isn't really all that hard now, is it? 
And this is just what saving faith does. This is the practice of saving faith. Saving, repentant, thankful faith wants nothing more than to be where Christ is, giving out these gifts. Saving faith wants nothing more than to be in the presence of Christ. Saving faith wants nothing more than to seek these first things first. These are the things that matter most. This is where your Lord and Savior is actively and presently reigning and ruling. So this is your life, your salvation, and your justification. Saving faith just gets it. Either you get it, or you don't. May God bless you with this saving first things first type of faith all your remaining days and into all of eternity. Amen. And now the peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We continue with the offertory. <laughs> Pray for the whole Church of God and for all people according to their needs. Almighty and most merciful God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we give you thanks for all your goodness and tender mercies, especially for the gift of your dear Son and for the revelation of your will and grace. Implant your word in us that, with good and honest hearts, we may keep it and bring forth the fruits of faith. We humbly implore you to rule and govern your Church throughout the world. Bless all who proclaim your truth, that we may be preserved in the pure doctrine of your saving word, and that faith in you may be strengthened, love toward others increased, and your kingdom extended. Send forth laborers into your harvest, and sustain those whom you have sent, that the word of reconciliation may be proclaimed to all people, and the gospel preached in all the world. Grant health and prosperity to all who are in authority, especially to His Majesty the King, the Governor-General, the Prime Minister and the Parliament, the Government of this province and all who have authority over us. Grant them grace to rule according to your good pleasure for the maintenance of righteousness and the hindrance and punishment of wickedness, that we may lead quiet and peaceable lives in all godliness and honesty. According to your good pleasure, Turn the hearts of our enemies and adversaries that they may cease their hostilities and walk with us in meekness and in peace. Comfort, O God, with your Holy Spirit all who are in trouble, want, sickness, anguish of labor, peril of death, or any other adversity. Grant courage and steadfastness, especially to those who suffer for your name's sake, that they may receive and accept their afflictions in the confidence that you will acknowledge them as your own. Although we have deserved your righteous wrath and punishment, yet we ask you, O most merciful Father, not to remember the sins of our youth nor our many transgressions. Out of your unspeakable goodness and mercy, defend us from all harm and danger to body and soul. Preserve us from false doctrine, from war and bloodshed, from plague and pestilence, from all calamity by fire and water, from hail and tempest, from failure of harvest and from famine, from anguish of heart and despair of your mercy, and from an evil death. In every time of trouble, show yourself a very present help, the Saviour of all, especially to those who believe. Cause all needed fruits of the earth to prosper, that we may enjoy them in due season. Give success to the Christian training of the young, 
to all lawful occupations on land, sea, and air, and to all pure arts and useful knowledge, crowning them with your blessing. Receive, O God, our bodies and souls and all our talents, together with the offerings we bring you. For by his blood your Son has purchased us to be your own, that we may live under him in his kingdom. These and whatsoever other things you would have us ask of you, O God, grant us for the sake of Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord and Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, O Lord, graciously receive the prayers of your church, that, being delivered from all adversity and error, it may serve you in safety and freedom and dwell in your peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. 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 Our hymn to depart today is number 649, Blessed Be the Tie That Binds. 649. Yeah. 
shall be free and perfect love and friendship reign through all eternity. Thank you so much for coming and being a part of this service as we gather together once again you know, this time to really remember that we need and we are called by Christ to keep first things first. And so I pray that you will always keep those priorities in line, that you will remember that God gives you what you truly need, everlasting life. All the rest is just gravy on top. God bless you all. Amen.